Okay, we're going to take a look at my Witch's Broom data from August. This is H-Alpha only data uh, gathered in the month of August. As you can see, despite uh, CCD stacks uh, anti-blooming function on the single frames, when the total image is integrated, I still have a nice bloom here to deal with. So I'm going to use the magic wand. Uh, when I paint this in later, it will only paint in where I've selected. It's a nice way of protecting the rest of the image. So once I've got it selected, I'll use the clone stamp tool to select an area of colour from the nearest pixels to the bloom and I'll start painting in the selected area. So let's zoom in and start that now. So there's an area. And we can start to set the size of this down to too big with your paint size because it's only a small bloom that you try to get rid of. If you do have a, a non anti blooming camera, then you will not have this problem. So this part of this process I'm going to speed up, so I think you get the picture here. I've selected only the bloom and now I'm starting to paint in that bloom. Of course the purists will say well you shouldn't be doing this because you don't know if there's stars under there or what data is under that uh, bloom itself and I would absolutely agree. But at the end of the day my goal here is to produce a nice uh, contrasty image, not a piece of scientific astronomy. So I'm going to go ahead and paint this blue out because it's very distracting in the image. One solution to this for people with uh, blooming cameras is to uh, twist the camera or rotate the camera during the session. Therefore the bloom will now become a cross or at least you will have the right data, the missing data that's under the bloom. It still doesn't help you to produce an aesthetically pleasing image though. So I'm being very careful about selecting the, 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 the nebulosity here to make sure that I'm not uh, bringing in a structure that's not there. As you can see at the end, because of the selection, which I've now removed, it leaves some lines which need to be tidied up. Of course, lines are very obvious in your images. Anybody who's had a satellite track or a uh, plane fly through a frame will certainly know that. But it's a very obvious thing. You do have to tidy those away. Also, the central star here is uh, going to be a little bit uh, wonky or lopsided after this process, and I'll show you how, how I'm going to fix that. It's very difficult to uh, blend in around the star itself. As you'll see in a moment, but no matter how careful you are, you, you can never restore the, the shape of the star. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the filter and I'm going to use a blur on the star. But first I'm going to select the star, make a circle with the approximate size using quick select. Then I'm going to filter, blur, radial blur. Now the radial blur I'm going to set to 100% and say OK. And we'll see exactly what it does. It makes the star perfectly symmetrical. It radially blurs it. In fact, it's not quite there yet, so I'm going to apply that twice. Now, you see the star to the lower left-hand side also looks a little bit odd in shape because it has a small uh, bloom running through it. So I'm going to show you the same radial blur on that star now as well. You can use this to fix stars in your image, prominent stars in your image. Of course, you're not going to fix all of them using this method, but the ones that are most obvious. But set the size using the quick select approximately the size of the star, select around the star, and now radial blur. And you'll see how it quickly changes the shape of that star and makes it look a lot more aesthetically pleasing in the overall image. The next step is to do a selective sharpening of the witch's broom once I've got these final little uh, these straight lines away from the top of the blue. So let's do that now. My hands can move very quickly when I need to. No, not really. I'm just speeding up the video. Once you're happy, just zoom back out and 
take a look at the image. No one would know that there's a balloon there at all prior to the adjustment. So this is where we do get into the realm of generating yeah, very good images, astro images. That's what we want to do. We're not producing scientific data. Otherwise, we wouldn't care about these artifacts. So now I'm going to do a high pass. I've created a duplicate layer and I'm making a high pass on the original image. I'm going to set the radius to a level around about 10, which reveals the most data. If you go too small, it disappears. If you come back up, you start getting coarser and coarser data. And I want to get the witch's broom itself, the knots of nebulosity. That's what I'm looking for. And I find that on this image, around about 10 pixels is good enough, but you can see it there now. Now you're going to change the uh, layer from normal to overlay. And you can see what an impact that makes on the image. But as with all these effects in Photoshop, it can be too much. And this is the case here. So if I blink back and two between this, this effect on and off, it is too much. In fact, it makes all the smaller stars pop in the image as well. And this star field is very dense around the witch's blue. So what I'm going to do now is layer, insert a layer mask and hide everything, hide all. So you can see it goes back to the original image. Now I'm going to paint through, using the paintbrush and the colour white, the detail that I want to reveal. So set the size of your paintbrush, don't go too big, don't go too small, make it too tedious for yourself. And now start painting through the mask. And you see immediately the, sh the sharp and high fast information coming through and making a big impact on the image. So let's speed up time and go a little bit faster and start painting through all the detail, all the twists and knots that you want to reveal in your image. So here we go. It's already starting to look very nice. Even those fainter shot waves above the star, I paint those edges as well because anything that is sharper or has a more defined edge will catch your eye in the image more easily. But of course you don't want to overdo this effect. This is why we're actually using the layer mask now. And I'll show you another trick with the layer mask shortly once we finish painting this in. Almost there. Final details. It's really starting to pop the detail out now. Now, control click or alt click on the layer mask itself. And this is what you've just painted. It doesn't look very nice, does it? But what we need to do now is put a blur on this, a Gaussian blur. So by putting a Gaussian blur on it, we make the, the fact that we've introduced this layer mask less obvious. It's, it just makes it all smoother in the image itself. So here I put a Gaussian blur on about 15 pixels. It just takes the hard lines away that we've been painting with that brush, but the brush already had soft edges, so it wasn't too bad. So now you can see the difference that makes. It looks more natural. It doesn't look as though we've put a layer mask on here with a high pass sharpened layer. The image looks more natural by using that blur. Of course, what you can also do, and I do do this as well, I will blend now this layer. And we'll show you that shortly. So this is the difference between it on and off. It's a big difference. Now I'll bring the blending down to, on this, when you're using a layer mask, you can leave it quite high. So here I'm going to leave it around 60%. Because I think that image looks quite natural as it is. And it's a big Im improvement now over the original. Once you're happy with everything, then you go to the final steps. And that is just to flatten the image. I'm just exa examining the detail there. But yeah, it looks good to me. Once you're happy, go ahead and flatten the image so layer flatten the image so now you have the one image not with, with all the layers they're gone now 
And now we can just look at the image adjustment, the final adjustments with this, or curves. I will uh, Alt, sorry, Command click or Control click the nebulosity I want to target with this eyedropper tool. Puts a point into the data for me. And now I will adjust it with the keyboard, keyboard keys, the arrow keys. Just to lift it just a touch, not too much. It was already close enough. That's okay. Finally, go back and go image adjustment levels. And let's just adjust the flat point finally, one last time. And there looks okay. Be careful not to clip the back point. And the last step, I will put using the unsharpened mask, a sharpen over the total image, but a very light one. You need to be careful with sharpening your astro images, especially one when you've taken the steps prior to selectively sharpen the information you want to have using a layer mask. So I'm going to bring this effect down a little bit, 60%. Well, here you can see if you push it too high with either the with either the percentage or the radius, it, it just blows the, the all every single little star in the image becomes too prominent. So you have to find a nice uh, happy medium. This is all subjective now and entirely up to yourself. And once you're, you're happy with the image, then go ahead and save for web. I use the save for web tool. I'll set the dimensions I want for the image. I do t tend to keep these quite large, but under one um, megabyte. And use this to save the image to a JPEG. You can use PNG or whatever your favorite format is. And now it's ready for posting. So there we have it, the Witch's Broom with Selective Sharpness using layer mask.